Good morning, church. Today is special for me because we have the kids in service, which I'm so excited about. Um, I get to speak as the kids pastor, so if anyone doesn't know me, I'm always hiding back there with the kids. I get to be a child and have fun all at the same time, so it's great. And I get to just the privilege of being with your kids. Um, so I have two kids, two and five, and they are you know, very well known in the church. They kind of make themselves comfortable, um, <laughs> which is great. So this morning, I wanted to kind of do a little things different because it is a family service. And, you know, we have adult service here and we do kids church there and it's at their level. But it's a really great thing when we can bring our kids and, and do it as a family unit and be able to worship and be that example because kids see and do what they are shown too. So it's great to have them here. So part of that is I have prepared a workshop sh worksheet. And, you know, we've got littles and we got a little bit older. So um, I really have a challenge for you kids. Can you guys wave at me if you're a kid? And if you're an adult, you can be a kid too. Um, I want to see you guys listening and being able to hear what we are speaking about today. And I want to hear what you guys hear that God is saying to you. So in this worksheet, I would love you guys to be able to draw a picture or write a word and after the service, come find me because, you know, as a kid pastor, there always has to be treats. So come find me. And parents, so we've been working through our series of royalty and royals and it's ex it's really exciting because at the beginning, you know, we're, we're learning about the blessings we've been taught and learned all about that. And so then as we get into the next three chapters of Ephesians, we're now starting to, instead of just learning about it, now it's like, how is it to affect our families? How is it to affect our marriages? How is it to affect our, our lives day to day? And so we're going to start today by doing Ephesians 6. And it's kind of cool because, you know, in Ephesians 6, we're actually talking about the parent-child relationship. So, you know, I get to do that. Um, we want to be able to look at that dynamic of parents and kids, but I don't want it just to sit there and just be talking to parents or kids. Um, I just want to be able to go, how can we apply this to our lives if you are a parent or if you're a kid, you know, there'll be times where I'm talking specifically about that, but it's how can we use that to our everyday life? Maybe you don't have kids or maybe you don't um, have, you know, parents around right now, but we all came from a parent, you know, um, and we have work. How is work and employers, how can we apply these same principles, which is so exciting that we have this. Um, when we've been talking about royal, royals this last bit, we've talked about how it's not our identity that isn't affected. It should be affecting every aspect of our lives. Our relationship with our parents, whether it's our bosses or our co-workers, there should be change and we want to have our royal identity that changes every aspect of our lives and we want to become more like Jesus. So I really am excited about this morning. I'm excited that um, we get to talk about this. When we talk about the gospel, it doesn't matter what aspect, when we are talking and when we are living in the gospel, having that in our lives. It changes us. And throughout the letter of Ephesians, we get to see that transformation. And I love that now that we're in chapter 6, we get to be able to see what God intended for us as Christians and our families, what it would look like and what it should look like for us to live a God-centered life. So I'm just going to open up in prayer, and I'd ask you to join me. Father, I thank you that you are here. 
I thank you that you speak words to us, and I just ask that right now that you would open our ears, you would open our hearts. Father, that you would be here and we welcome you. Thank you for equipping us. And Father, that for every person here, Father, you would just speak what they need to hear, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. So we are going to um, start off with looking at Ephesians 6, and we're going to specifically look at verses 1 to 3 right now. And in this, it's going to give us two insights. One, that Christian children love God by honoring their parents. But then we're also going to see that Christian parents love God by discipling their children. And so I'm just going to read this. It's Ephesians 6, 1 to 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live a long in, uh, you will live long in the land. Sorry about that. So this passage is speaking about submission, about the child and the parent relationship. And later on in, in this um, chapter, it actually goes into talking about the master and servant relationship. And a lot of what it says later on is actually also what it's saying about children and, and parents. And because the whole servant and master thing, that could be a whole different sermon. So we're going to stick with this part. But again, I just want to remind you guys that when we are talking about children and parents, how can we apply it to our lives? How can we apply it to our employer? Or if we're an employee, how, how can we apply that in our lives? So is it easy to obey? N no, sounds simple, but really isn't. And so we're starting off with this command, children, obey your parents. Well, I have two kids, and obedience and training them and, and all that can be fun. I can say, you know, Zoya, it's time to clean up. And it doesn't matter if she hears or not. Sometimes it just kind of goes in one ear and out. You may have to repeat things, but it's my job as a parent to help equip my child. And so the whole process of parenting is definitely a journey. They don't give us a rule book as to what we should or shouldn't do, how we should train each child or the things. Every kid is so unique, even in what their needs are. So in here we have three reasons why children should obey their parents. And I do an online group with, um, with the kids on Thursday nights. And I asked a few of our kids, I was like, what is obedience? And right away, I have one kid going, listening to your mom and dad, doing what they say. And then I had this one kid go, not hitting your sister or brother. And I'm like, that would be it. So one, number one, as a reason as to why our children need to obey your parents is obeying your, ch your parents is obeying the Lord. So this, to obey means to hear and to do. So we respond. When we hear something, we respond by doing it. And... It's kind of like an answer at the door. So if someone knocks, if we ignore it, nothing has happened. But the reason we have a knock and we have an answer, it's the both way to do it. And so an obedient child is in effect doing it unto the Lord. So this in Colossians 3, 20, it actually says, children, obey your parents, in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. And I love how in Ephesians, it's not just, these are Paul's words said over and over and repeated. And it full in Colossians 3, if you go back, you're going to hear a lot of the same things that we're talking about today. Number two, it is right. Scripture says that 
it is right. It is right for all Christian families or not to obey. In any culture around the world, you will see the family unit, the family dynamic. And they're not just doing what they please. The whole family unit, whether it's secular or Christian, is to obey their parents. It's just right. Family is a building block of society. And this is really important because if they don't, if we don't obey our parents, we're most likely not going to be obeying God. And number three, it's the command of the Lord with the promise. And again, Paul is talking about this. And back in Deuteronomy, the Old Testament also talks about this with our Ten Commandments. We need to honor our parents, honor our father and mother, that it will go well with you and you may be enjoying a long life. So what happens if we don't obey our parents? Well, when we have obedience, sometimes that makes it hard because we have certain steps that we like to do. It's a different interruption of, of our day-to-day -day life. S obedience means that sometimes we need to do something different. And a lot of times, it's something we don't want to do. And Paul uses the word children. And here he's talking to a young child, living in the home under your parents' care. But um, we, say, we see these same principles echo through Scripture in like different areas of life. In Romans 13, it talks about how honor and obey in authority over government. So we pray for them. We submit. In John, 1 John 2, 3 to 6, it talks about how we must honor and obey God in every aspect of our lives. If we want to know God, if we truly want to know God, we need to obey him. So anybody living still at home, this is definitely, you know, God speaking to us. And what is exciting is this isn't just Paul making up this, these words. These are God's words that Paul is now writing to us. God's mission for his children is to trust and obey parents. It's a reflection of the trust and obedience to God. And that's what's so exciting here is that as parents... As adults to our younger people, our kids, we get to be able to be that first picture of who God is. And so when we go into verse 3, it says that it may go well with you. So what does that mean? Well, I can tell you that if, you know, as a parent, we go, don't run across the road, look before you, you cross or whatever, and a child does not do it, or even an adult. Come on, guys. It's not going to go well with you. You will possibly die or at least get very severely injured, which is not going to lengthen your life. Honor cannot be in view of a reward. So we can't just be honorable just because we're going to get something. And when we do that... You know, that is specifically called flattery, to do and receive back. When we talk about honor, we talk about how honor is respecting another for who they are. So as an employee, if I say, you know, we need to honor our employer, we need to respect who they are. We need to have the right heart attitude in this. So if honoring is a way of, like honoring your parents when you're young, what do you do when you're older? 
we still need to have that honor to, to our parents. Um, it's not that I think all of us parents or, or, you know, people over us have all the answers. It's not that our government has all the answers. But our obedience is an, a training ground to us following God. It is a training God so that when we, if we can obey others, if we can obey God, we learn to obey, we learn to hear. And through that, that's when we can have a good long life, when we are learning and growing and being obedient to Christ. So I know talking about parents is a touchy subject. Some of us have had great parents, but I do know that there's a good portion of us in this room today that maybe didn't have the best example or the best upbringing or the best view of who God is. Maybe you were treated poorly. And so some of this is like, oh, I don't want to hear it, or this is a touchy subject. But in this, sometimes because we have those outside things, we don't know how to then honor or be obedient because we haven't been shown that. When it talks about honor your father and mother, there's not a qualifier. There's no quotations on it saying that you must do this if you're a good parent or if you're a good employee. Where the qualifiers are, it's for us being obedient in Christ. It's to the children. We are the children. We need to honor our parents. We need to do it in the Lord. So I wanted to give like a personal experience and, and stuff. So I, I kind of had to do a little bit of a clarifier. So um, I grew up, I did grow up in foster care and I do have biological birth parents. Um, I have adopted parents. So there is a difference when I'm talking about my parents, but I still need to be honoring to them. Growing up, my biological parents I believe they did what they could do as best as they could in what, even where they were. There's a lot of healing and mental health that struggles that they had. And you know what? I think they got a little bit mixed up in terms of their roles and what they should be doing. And yeah, none of it was in the Lord. Um, growing up, I struggled with the question, how do I honor my parents? Because of, well, they're not being the best parent or maybe they're, you know, there's abuse and, and, and this is not what we are supposed to be under. And so I still had to learn that balance of, of what, what it meant to, to look like to honor. And so I, I wanted to ask, how do we honor our parents? But not just our parents, how do we honor God in authority over us? Anybody. Whether, again, your employer, whether it's a friendship or a coworker. How do we honor others? So, first, we need to treat them with the proper value and weight that they deserve. This is huge. Because we can't be treating them like they don't deserve. With our parents... I would not be here if somebody did not birth me. My kids, I birthed one, and I'm a legal guardian, but I'm still mom to her. But I'm still their parent, and they wouldn't be here without someone birthing them. But God created each and every one of us. And as a parent, when they do something well or when something happens, we get so excited. We're filled with joy and pride of whatever that situation may be. And sometimes when there's that other relationship or other parental, we forget that, you know what, maybe they're not perfect or maybe they're things, but maybe we can 
reach out with that olive branch. Sometimes we're the person that needs to reach out and, you know, just share something, something good that's happening. Honoring our parents means not withholding love. And second, we need to forgive them, which, trust me, is not easy. But when we start working on us, we change because God works through us. We can point and point and it's them or that, but when God helps repair and, and heal us, the things that we are pointing become less in the forefront. It's now in the back. And there's a change that happens in us. And one of the things is, like, God promises in 1 John 1, 9, he promises to be with us. It says, be strong and courageous, for the Lord your God is with you. He's not leaving us ever. And Jesus wants to see us free. So, sorry. Sometimes we we get blinders on. And when we talk about that whole honor, it's because we don't truly understand what that honor means. And so it's hard that we can never honor our parents until we see how much we're approved. We can't honor or forgive when we don't see our forgiveness in Christ. We can't honor our parents because we don't understand that we are redeemed. And when we look back at Ephesians 1 to 4, it's using words like obey, honor, disciple, instruction. So up in here, we've been like talking about children obey, obey, obey. What is that? But now as parents, we are called to disciple, to equip, to instruct. And wouldn't it really be great if we just take Ephesians and, and 6, 4, like 1 to 4, and we go 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals well, we have a perfect family. It doesn't work that way. We're not just a math equation. There is a process, but it's not just one plus one. Life is messy. And we get to wade through it and learn and grow. But what is exciting is at the end, the beauty in all of those curvy paths. So now we go in to talk about parents. What insights are here talking to us as parents to to employees or employers what what it, what is god saying here and i do want to talk about like the fact that yes we are not to to um abuse our children or you know cause them to to act out in anger we want to have the responsibility that God gave us that we're shepherding and we, are, we get to train up our children. And we get to have that experience alongside them. But we remember that God has an, just blessed us with, with these children and, and they're not ours forever, you know? We get to train them up. And so... James McDon or Montgomery Boyce, and I'm sorry if I butchered his name, I really love what he says, is to teach the child to obey the parent is to teach the child to obey God. To allow the child to defy and disobey the parent is to teach the child to defy and disobey God with all the obvious consequences. Like, that is just a great summary of what it is our jobs. And, you know, kids, they have to be instructed 
how to do things. It's not a, an automatic process. Do you know what is an automatic process? It is really easy for them to disobey. They don't need to be taught what not to do because it just kind of comes naturally. But what they need to learn and what we all need to learn is how to do things properly. In verse 4, it says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but to bring them up in dis discipline and instruction of the Lord. God wants us to disciple our children. We can't make our children Christians, but we can make it easy for them to love Jesus by the examples that we do, by our actions. And I read this quote recently, and it, it, it's also, I, I really do love quotes, um, especially because it's like, what am I trying to say? Um, the goal of parenting is to work ourselves out of a job. The goal of parenting is to raise children who were once totally dependent on us to be independent, mature people with reliance on God and proper connectedness to Christian communities and are able to stand on their own feet. I want to raise my kids so that they have their own two feet, so that they can go out into the world to do better than I did. I am not perfect, but I want them to do better than I did. I don't want them to be dependent on me. I want them to learn their dependence on God. And that's where we talk about, like, as parents, we are that first picture of who God is. And they really get a sense of authority, love, protection from their parents, from all of us, right? And when we don't have that example, maybe we had bad parents and stuff, our view of who God is is then clouded. So our earthly father or our father figures are supposed to give us that protection, that, that provision, the identity and our earthly, like our mothers, our mother figures are supposed to help teach and comfort. And when we don't have that, our view sometimes is distorted. And we want to bring that view back into alignment of what God has for us. Our homes are supposed to be life lessons to allow our children to, to make mistakes, to stumble, and have someone that cut, um, catches up with us. God has such blessings, such grace for each and every one of us. And sometimes we forget um, that we will just be comfortable in what we have or, or whatever, and we're just too easily pleased. We could have a whole buffet table of anything we absolutely wanted, but we're going to sit in that comfort. And we want to be able to have that full buffet table of every little thing that our kids want to learn, to grow. We don't want to cause our children to get angry. And in, in Ephesians 4, it's, it's talking specifically, do not provoke your child. And there's a really big difference between intermittent anger or this deep, deep rage, anger, because of how we're brought up. And in 1 Kings 1, verse 20, no, oh, Samuel, blah. yeah, 1 Samuel 20, sorry, guys. It's talking about King Saul. So he is super angry with David here. And he had this dinner, and now David's not at the table, which angers him even more. He wants to kill him. And Jonathan knows that's, that Saul wants to kill David. 
So he helps them avoid this dinner. And as parents, what, what Jonathan did was right. But in this, Saul then gets angry that Jonathan helped him. And he like uses a sword and he's just like, how dare you? And he had this righteous, deep anger in defense. And, there, and so with Saul can be that parent that is just hard and mean. But it's also possible that we can parent too soft. And we're not saying we should do this and yell and scream and, and stuff. I'm just saying that it can look different. We want to bring our children up with discipline and instruction. In um, Genesis 37, we see that Jacob, we see the failures of him. So he favored his son. He favored him above other, and so others then became resentful, and they eventually sold Jacob into slavery. But Jacob's failure was being too soft, having favoritism. And with God, there is no favoritism. We want to be able to steward what God has given us. And we want to raise our children right. Our duty is to help our children follow Jesus. And it goes back to we can't make them Christians. We can't make them have a relationship. But we need to provide a space, a place where they can learn who Jesus is. What does this look like? Who is this? And sometimes we get really busy with life. And I ask, what is your priority in life? Is it God or is it life? We can get so busy with the extracurriculars, seeing our friends or family work, that we forget that our number one thing should be God. And whether it's in a parent and childhood kind of relationship where we're showing our kids what does that relationship is, or whether it's an employee or employee relationship, are we shining Christ? Are we first and foremost being that example of who Christ has called us to be? Are we creating a place where people might see something different in our lives and know that we are a follower of Christ, that we are taking that step that it's different. In, in kids' ministry, I always say, what is, our, what is kids' church about? Because I don't want to be the same as a, a school. I don't want to be the same as a daycare. There has to be a difference when we're doing kids' church because we want to bring them deeper in their relationship with God. We want to partner with those parents that are a part of this because it's not just our job to teach the kids. This is your guys' job. We get to come alongside you and support you and, and be a part of that. And it's super exciting. And so growing up, I... I had foster care and I had a foster parent who eventually was actually from the church I was attending. And I, they went in to be actual foster parents specifically for me because the church had asked. And I was just like, okay, let's, let's see what this is and um, developing this relationship. And I had been in homes that were non-Christians before. And now all of a sudden I'm in a home that loves Jesus and is sold out. And I'm seeing this difference. And even today, I kind of look back to those examples because um, her name was Cheryl and her relationship with Jesus was the first thing that I was like, 
okay, how, how are you doing this? Why are you doing this? I could have someone to answer these questions to because every day, Monday through Sunday, she had a specific time where she sat there and she was in the presence of God. And as a kid, I watched this. I wondered, oh, is that what it means to be a Christian? Is that what it means to follow Christ? And I started asking those questions, but then it wasn't just me watching her have those questions. It was like she invited me in to have time where we could put on some worship at home, where we could sit there and pray. And as a parent, that was a huge teaching point for me as a child. And so I watched her consistently not just say these things and expect me to do something else. You know, we always say, do, do what I say, not do what, I, what I'm doing. Well, here it was like, do what I say and watch me what I'm doing. Have that participation. And so I had this great example of being able to now use that with my own kids. So at home, we throw on worship. We pray because our kids see and hear and do what they see, hear, and do. And Billy Graham has this other quote where it's, children will in, uh, invariably talk, eat, walk, think, respond, and act like their parents. Give them a target to shoot at. Give them a goal to work towards. Give them a pattern that they can clearly see, and you will give them something that is worth more than gold and silver. And so this morning, we've talked about a lot about parent, child, and I hope you can also apply that to whether it's your work, your family, your friends. We, we've seen that it is expressed in the family, in the submission, obedience of a child to their parents. How are we being obedient to Christ? How are we submitting to Christ? It's seen in the parents' care and instruction and equipping and training of their children. It's seen every day on how we're doing life, how we're, how we're doing work. You know, God sees everything, the littlest thing. Even if you're every day picking up garbage as you walk by that you see. God sees that. He doesn't just see when you do these big things or when someone's watching you. Am I doing it right? No. God is, sees it all the time. And that's what's really important. The Word of God tells us to bring, the, bring it to the Lord. All things bring to him God watches he is a rewarder of truth and there's no favoritism and I want to close with this that I know that some of us haven't grown up in Christian families and even if our parents were Christians maybe they didn't parent us that way Maybe we were the bad kids and we didn't make things easy or right. Maybe we have Christ now, but we still haven't made things right and asked for forgiveness. I think this question applies to all of life. Do I believe that Jesus is a redeemer? I can respect him as a king, the one who watches over us. I can listen to him as a prophet, the one that speaks with power. But do I trust him as a redeemer? The word trust is huge. Do I trust him as a redeemer, the one who makes all things new? When we learn to trust, we stop 
quenching the spirit from moving. We start allowing God to do the things that he wants and plans to do, growing and healing us. This morning, Jesus can change our story, whether it's from before or it's going forward. Today can be a new day. He's asking me, will you let me? Do you need grace to honor your parents? Because it's yours in Christ. Do you need help maybe valuing and forgiving your parents? It's here in Christ. Maybe you need help day by day, moment by moment to parent. Christ is here to help you with that. Everything that we need isn't in me, isn't in you, it's in Christ. Because Christ gave it to, gave himself for us. None of us are perfect. And sometimes we wait because we want perfect. But instead of receiving that, then we receive nothing. Let's come to the Father and let's say yes, let's do the right thing. The Son, Jesus, showed us love and honor. He loved and he honored his father. His father didn't provoke him in anger, but he disciplined and instruct. And the Holy Spirit, who is sustaining us all, can we trust God or are we going to limit him? Because right now, I want to be able to just trust that God knows and, and will be there with me and, and have that full trust and let go of all the things I'm not trusting. God is here this morning and able to be with us and heal those relationships. And so I want to be able to take a moment and just ask God to show us if maybe there's a relationship that needs some healing. Maybe there's a relationship that we have not been honoring. And so, Father God, I ask that you would come here this morning and show us if there is a relationship, a, a person, um, a friendship, a family that maybe we haven't been able to honor, Father, that you would bring it to the, our minds right now. And once the Holy Spirit re reveals something to you, I want you guys right now, take a moment. I want you to bring it to the Father. I want you to release it to Him. Give it to Him. And Holy Spirit, I ask you that you come right now and that you would show us how we can maybe honor that person. Father, that you would bless the person, that we could speak words of life. And this morning, I want to challenge you that you can do this 
at home too. Take that time to sit in God's presence and ask about honor. Ask about how we can honor whoever God brought to your mind. And I want you to remind you that God only speaks positive. That if we hear negative, if it's not bringing love, if it's not bringing glory to God, this is not God. We always want to know that God's loving voice is tender, not critical. And it always will be in line with with Scripture. So when you go home this morning, ask God, what can I do to honor that person? And maybe that means taking that first step, reaching out and apologizing, forgiving. Maybe your first step is to even verbally say, I forgive. That's a huge step because sometimes it stays in, but our words are, our mouths, our words are powerful. Father God, I just thank you that you are at work. Father, teach us to be obedient to you. Help us to just grow and apply all of this in in our day-to-day lives that we will shine you through us that people would see and learn more about you because of our actions because of our words that we would be an example of who you really are Father in Jesus name Amen.